Hey everyone, so what do we have in store for us today? I know you're all tired of hearing about the pandemic and the vaccine, but this is an important topic and all pseudoscience on the internet really does real harm to real people. But yeah, after this I'll talk about some other stuff, at least for a little bit. So there's this podcast called The Dark Horse Podcast. This video we're about to debunk is a video from their highlights channel where they talk about, quote, destroying healthy cells in order to build immunity. Let's have a look. So one thing that is clear, I think, is that the mechanism of action the intended mechanism of action here, where mRNAs make it into cells, cause those cells to present for an antigen, means that those cells are then going to be destroyed by the immune system. Wow, what microphone are you using? Damn, that produces some high quality sounds. You can even clearly hear him scratching his beard. RNAs. Jesus, I didn't sign up for an ASMR. Maybe it's time I upgrade my own equipment. This microphone I'm using is just not high quality enough. Anyway, back on topic, there's a lot to unpack here. And in order to give you the background information, basically they have completely misinterpreted how RNA vaccines work. Now, if we rewind further into the episode, they basically claim that the RNA causes cells to express the viral spike protein and then marks them as an infected cell which the immune system would then destroy. So it's pretty obvious that's not the mechanism of action or even the proposed mechanism of action. We'll get to that a bit more, but for now I'll let him go on a bit before we stop for our next biology session. So one thing that is true is that we need to have a conversation about how much damage is being done to normal healthy tissues in order to get the immunity. Is there a level of damage to tissues that you should accept? Absolutely. Ooh, scary. The vaccine is sacrificing your own cells in order to obtain the acquired immunity. No, that's simply not the case. And since in your description you claim that you both have PhDs in biology, that makes me question where you got your PhDs from. Okay, so from what I saw from earlier in their episode, they had two concerns. One of which is a minor concern about the lipid nanoparticles, which really doesn't do anything except for helping the RNA pass through the membrane of your cells. And the other is that the immune system attacks the cells, which are now, quote, infected in order to acquire immunity. Let's take a look at their interpretation of the mechanism of action. You've got the mRNA gets dumped into a cell. The cell, because all cells in the body uh, make proteins from mRNA messages that are usually coming from the nucleus of the cell, just simply translates this thing automatically. And the nature of the protein that gets translated has this anchor bit in it that if all goes according to plan results in it sticking off the surface of the cell, pointing out at which point the hope is it will be encountered by uh, antigen presenting cells, which will detect this cell. And I should just say that in some sense, what this is, is a benevolent hijacking of the immune system. Because what the immune system is doing, the, these antigen presenting cells are maneuvering around the body looking for our cells that have been infected. And so these cells, by finding our own cells that are displaying novel proteins, get a uh, an indication of an infection, and then they take the evidence of that infection to a place where cells that are capable of responding to the infection are lurking, the lymph nodes, for example. And anyway, it accelerates the process by which your immune system discovers the enemy, gets a description of it, and then figures out how to recognize it really well and creates an, an army of cells that can then fight it. Okay, so a lot to unpack here. In order to debunk this, we'll have to revisit what RNA vaccines are and how it works. And I know I already made a video talking about this, but I will be going into a lot more detail here. Spoiler alert, what the guy said in the video is not how it works. If you were right, then we wouldn't be debunking this video, of course. So first of all, this is much simpler than a traditional vaccine, which is more focused on injecting antigens or weakened pathogens. Instead, we focus only on the spike protein and create an mRNA based on it. After injecting, the mRNA enters your cells where it can then produce the protein based on the template. Now you might be asking, which cells are actually doing this? And the answer is, pretty much any cell can. Except for mRNA vaccines, the cell that will be primarily performing this function will be the dendritic cell. Dendritic cells are similar to macrophages in many ways in that they both are antigen presenting cells. So for our purposes here, you can sort of think of them as the same, but there are key differences such as which types of cells they activate, which we won't go into today. Once a dendritic cell absorbs the mRNA, it codes the spike protein, but it does not release the spike protein into the bloodstream. So in other words, the mock spike protein is not free-floating in your blood, so rest assured. Instead, the dendritic cell goes through antigen presentation, and this is a key step to acquiring adaptive immunity. Basically, it attaches the spike protein to an MHC class 2 molecule which then gets presented on the cell surface. T helper cells can then study this antigen that is being presented to them, and the step continues to B cell proliferation and overall adaptive 
adaptive immunity. The part where these two get wrong about this is that they think the cells that are absorbing the RNA and producing the spike protein is an unspecified regular cell. They then think that the antigen presenting cells then find these quote infected cells and destroy them in a regular immune reaction, which then allows them to present the antigens. And that's simply not the case. Rather, it is the dendritic cells themselves that absorb the RNA and the step immediately skips to antigen presentation. Also, the mechanism they propose simply will never work because it is not the antigen presenting cells function to destroy cells infected by viruses. We leave that job to the natural killer and cytotoxic T cells. So yeah, there are so many things wrong about that interpretation and with two biology PhDs, I find it hard to believe they are unfamiliar with this mechanism. In addition, earlier in the podcast, they literally read an article that teaches you how it works. I won't be showing that clip here, but they completely butchered the interpretation, which is where we are at now. Anyway, let's see what else needs to be debunked in this podcast. On the other hand, how well calibrated is that? Mm -hmm. Given that we are using a novel technology in order to get the mRNAs into these cells, how many cells are damaged in the case where a patient takes up a huge amount of this stuff into a disproportionately large number of cells, right? The dosage is controlled, so each patient theoretically gets the same amount. I don't think these things can be well calibrated given how novel this is because yeah. we don't know, you know, we don't know how to efficiently get it into uh, to cells to get the, the cells to display this, this uh, spike protein. It's literally the same as any other drug. When you're giving someone metformin, how do you know if certain patients will absorb more than others? The answer is dosage. What a silly concern you have here. Those long-term mm -hmm. unknowns clearly exist, but there's also a short-term set of unknowns here which won't manifest until later. If you're destroying healthy tissue, because that's necessary to get the spike protein displayed, which is necessary to get the immune system to learn the trick, right? Then the point is you are borrowing from future repair capacity. <sighs> okay, so yeah, I've already debunked this part. There's no damaging your own cells because the RNA goes straight to the antigen presenting cells, not to general cells like you think. And there's no mechanism of sacrificing your own cells in order to acquire immunity. That's just the truth of it. Essentially, this is just skipping a step of detecting an antigen and taking a shortcut immediately to antigen presentation. No cells are harmed in the process. Are you borrowing enough to matter? Don't know. The thing about this video is that they are essentially questioning rather than providing answers. Instead of telling us things, they instead question what we know already in order to stir distrust in the vaccine. It's a technique that is quite effective that disguises itself as, quote, we don't know enough, which is entirely false. Get your vaccine, people. You know what's funny to me? We live in a first world country which has taken massive amounts of stocks of COVID vaccines, shots which other countries wish they had more of. But instead of realizing how lucky we are to live in a rich country that has snatched up so many vaccine doses, these people instead refuse refuse to take their free shot because they're ignorant. All of this is fueled by videos like this one, which has reached the eyes of hundreds of thousands of people. How much more ungrateful could we possibly be?